When we open the book of Joshua, we find in the first chapter, the solemn reality, Moses, God's servant, is dead. But you know, the work of God goes on. We have got to realize that God can do his work without us. But God has ordained to use us as his instruments while we're here. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27, God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, that no flesh would glory in his presence. Before God called his servant Moses home, Moses laid his hand upon Joshua, and he was filled with a spirit of wisdom. You and I need wisdom for the journey that God has called us to. Now we find that God gives a command to Joshua. He says, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all the people, unto the land which I do give to them. So the command of God is very clear. Joshua knows exactly what God wants him to do. And friend, that is important for you and me. It's to know the mind and the will of God. And if you do not know that, then seek his face for his will for your life. But with that command, there comes a comfort. Because in verse 5 it says, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Now God did not say that Joshua wouldn't be opposed or face great opposition. But he promises him victory. That no man shall be able to stand against him. In other words, he is promised before he takes a step that in the ultimate victory is assured. And praise God, as we face our adversary, sin shall not have dominion over us. We're promised victory too. And then he was promised something else. God's presence. For he says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Isn't that precious? To know that Joshua, you're not walking alone. You're not facing the enemy alone. I'm with you every step of the way, just as I was with Moses. And then he says, I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And praise God, God will never fail his word. There's the faithfulness of God. You can rest assured in the promises that God has given you. And then you notice something else. He says, if you do this, Joshua, then you'll find your way prosperous. Remember the motto of William Carey, the missionary to India? Expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. Charles Haddon Spurgeon speaking about these promises. He said they did not exclude effort, neither did they preclude occasional disaster or frequent tribulation or testing of his faith or even suffering very greatly. But he was promised victory. And then God gives him this counsel. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. The priests were to protect the law of God and so was Joshua. But friend, it was more than that. The law of God was to protect him. He was to read it. He was to speak it. He was to repeat it. His conversation was to be about it. He was to meditate upon it day and night. And the word meditate means he was to focus his mind. He was to thoroughly and deliberately think upon it. He was to chew repeatedly for an extended period upon the word of God and then he was to get strength from God's word but he was to do something else observe to do according to all that is written therein see it's not enough to know what God says the important thing is to do it to do it and then notice the confidence because God says if you will do that he says then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. You're going to prosper in this battle, no matter what you have to face. You're going to prosper. In Second Chronicles, in the chapter 26, it says, concerning Isaiah, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Now, Joshua was not promised 
material or financial prosperity. But he was in a battle. God promised him military victory. And Joshua was involved in a great battle. But it was for God's glory. And the battle was the Lord's. And God has promised that he'd prosper. And then he says, Thou shalt have good success. My, what a way to go into a battle, friend. To knowing that you're standing on the promises of God. The source of his success was the Lord. And remember, God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply. God help you to take your stand today. March forward in victory. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, bless your word to our hearts. For Jesus' sake. Amen. From my heart to yours, home to yours. God bless you.